start right away. I'm going to talk about the succulents of Brazil, and you may be thinking, what succulents grows in Brazil? <laughs> so, the main families of cultivated plants, other than cacti, and their occurrence in Brazil. That's, I, I put a list and I check. Uh, Agaveci, agave, fucrea, yucca, no, we don't have any of those. <laughs> Uh, Isoace, Conophyllum, Falcaria, Litops, no. <laughs> but actually, we do have two native species, but those are weedy things that grow in marshes, so you, you don't consider those succulents, really. Uh, the Apocinaceae, Adenium, Wernia, Pacpodium, do we have something similar? Just a few. I will show some of them to you. Uh, as for the lady, Aloe, Basteria, Haworthia, none. <laughs> Crassulaceae, Crassula, Echeveria, Calancoi, Sedum, yes. yeah. none. <laughs> Dracenaceae, Dracena, Sosebieria, none. <laughs> Euphorbiaceae, Euphorbia, Jatropha, Monodenium, yes, we have a few of those. Ruscasi, Belcarnia, Calibanus, Desilirum, Olina, you see around here those plants. We don't have them in Brazil as well. <laughs> so, do succulent plants really exist in Brazil? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you plants in these families uh, Apocinaceae, Begoniaceae, Bromeliaceae, Bursaraceae, Caricaceae, Convolvulaceae. Cacantaceae, Dioscoriaceae, Euphorbiaceae, Fabaceae, Gemsnelliaceae, Malvaceae, Moraceae, Melastomataceae, Piperaceae, Portulacaceae, Solanaceae, Vitaceae. Um, and probably, if you go looking, probably there are more plants from other families that are also succulents. And I have shown this map yesterday. Uh, the same thing that holds for the cacti holds for the other succulent plants. Most of them are found in the drier areas. This brown spot here is the Caatinga. And also along the coast. And starting with the Apocinaceae, we have quite a few shrubs which are more or less succulent, not unlike, for instance, Plumeria. Uh, in, the fem in the genus Alamanda, like this one, Alamanda leaf. You can see the small seedling looks like an adenio seedling. Uh, but then the plant grows, this is the, the, the flower, and looks just a normal shrub, but it's a uh, sherophyte. It, it grows alongside the cacti and it uh, resists uh, uh, lack of water. And some of the plants in this family that occurs in Brazil are quite striking. I mean, uh, Mark in the, the previous talk, wanted a uh, blue adenium. Well, you have this in the same family. This is another Mandevilla species, Mandevilla gracielae, and it has beautiful flowers. And it has a tuber, unfortunately I do not have a picture of the tuber, but it has an underground tuber as well. Uh, this is a small succulent shrub, and it's one of those plants that, that can be trained as bonsai, uh, like the one you have here, uh, 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 I think it's Buster Microphila. It grows like that. Uh, it's called Marsdenia megalanta. That, that, sorry. That's how it looks like in the dry season. When it rains, it has lots of leaves and it makes these really nice big flowers as you can see here, and it's a small plant. It does not grow very big and very succulent. Just a few shots of the flowers. Very unusual colors. Here you can see how, how big the flowers are. Not, not very big, but big enough, I think. Uh, jumping to another family, Begoniaceae. Uh, we have some begonias that are stem succulents, like this one. I still don't have a name for this plant, but 
I cultivate it, I grow it uh, back in Brazil, and it's really nice. I grow it together with the other succulents. It has very thick stems, thick leaves, uh, and it is a succulent. So there are a few plants from Begonia, succulent plants of Begonia in Brazil. Uh, Bromeliaceae. People from cactus and succulents uh, usually don't grow bromeliads, or if they grow, they also have the bromeliad society, they are members of that, that society, because it's just, I don't know, most bromeliad people like the bromeliads from the tropical areas, uh, but there are bromeliads that grow in right alongside the cacti and other succulents, and there are also succulents. In Brazil, we have plants such as this, which is a DK species. And I must confess, I don't know my bromeliads very well, so I just know the genes, I don't know the names of the plants. So this is another DK. Look at the color of those. Some of them can be really colorful, either very bright red or wine colored or white. And I'll just go through some pictures of DKs here. And I think these are as succulent as any of the cacti that grows in the same areas. This is one of the decades that are tissues, so the leaves grow more or less like a fan. And you see here, this is a disco cacti, so it's growing right alongside it, and it has very thick, very succulent leaves as well. So two species here in one shot of ticket, or maybe two different color morphs of the, of the same species, I don't know. This is still Dikia. and But there are, Dikia, I think it's, you are more familiar with this genus, but there are other uh, succulent bromeliads in Brazil. And one of the most striking is one plant that was simply described as Encolirium agavoides. This one, it's a tiny plant, very short leaves, very thick leaves. Look at that. It's really nice. In the same fam in the same genus, in Collyrium, you have big succulent plants like this. This is the equivalent of agave that we have over there. Look at those plants. Those are very thick uh, uh, leaves. And if you cut them, they are succulent. You can see that they water tissue. Here are two species of encolirium. And the difference between DK and encolirium is uh, when they flower. Encolirium, are, uh, they, flower, they flower from the apex. So what is the name? The monocarpic, yes, thank you. And decals are not monocarpic. That's the, basically the, the, the biggest difference between the two genera. And in some places, like here, they carpet the ground. You, you cannot walk without stepping on the plant. That's another Encolirium species. That one, I know the name, that's Encolirium horridum. Uh, it grows on nearly vertical uh, rock places. Here you can see uh, uh, Colocephalocerus species, Colocephalocerus fluminensis, and that's how the plant grows. <laughs> but it's also succulent, it's this really nice plant. That's another Encolini species, I have no idea which is the name of this one, but it's really nice red leaves. That's another one of these white types. I mean, Every time I send pictures to friends who, who grow bromeliads, they say, okay, you found a new species. <laughs> and some of them have been described already. Uh, this is another genus, this is Orthophyton. It's also uh, leaf succulent in the bromeliads. This one is Orthophyton brownie. This one is Orthophyton burlemaxi, named after burlemax. Another orthophyton, and you can see the colors of these plants, they are amazing. This is orthophyton horridum. 
And this is a small species called Orthophytum saxicola. It can be either brownish or green, and this is how it grows in nature, together with the cacti and other succulents. This is one of the species I described. This is Orthophytum schultzianum, after Rudolf Schultz, with whom I wrote the book on Ubermania. So, okay, I have to go a little bit faster because of time. Uh, in the books of Racy, we also have some succulents. Uh, the, more, the main one is this tree, Comifera leptocleus. It's a, a big succulent tree found in the dry areas of Brazil. You can see here the roots going over. Uh, the, this is a rock pavement, so the plant is basically on top of the rock here. And in some places, okay, sorry. This is the peeling bark of this plant. I particularly find this really, really attractive. I think it should be in every garden in Brazil, because it's beautiful, the bark, how, how it feels. And yes, this is how the, the plant looks in nature. But sometimes it, the, you find the plants in places where it cannot grow as tall, like here. You can see the roots all over the place. This is a very rocky area. And in some places it gets dwarf. And, and that's a, just like an adenio or something like that. It's, it's a perfect pot call plant. And you can have it in a pot or something like that. This is a small seedling of uh, Ceracomifera uh, leptophlaus, you can see how thick it is. Uh, here is the flower of this plant, and here are the fruits, just to show how, how they look like. Uh, and the people in Brazil, they use this, uh, the, the wood of this plant as fence poles, and they just stick the poles in the ground, and sometimes they just <laughs> grow back again, and you have another tree. Uh, in the Caricaceae, uh, Caricaceae is the family of papaya. So, papaya is one of the Caricaceae, but there are several other species. And one of them is this. It's a small shrub. The, here are the fruits of this plant. And you look at this and you think, okay, what, what is that? It's just a shrub. Until you dig it up, and that's what you have below ground huge caldex, and it's a caldex because you, you can raise it and it will grow, it's, it's not just a tuber, it is succulent. So these pictures are not mine, but this is how big it can get. And people in the poor countryside, they use these root tubers to feed the cattle. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, here are the flowers of Chakrasia conubensis. This is a species that grows all over in Brazil, in the dry areas, up to Bolivia, I think. Here are the fruits. But there are other species. Here's one that I could not quite identify. I think this is Chakrasia quercifolia, oak leaf Chakrasia. Uh, from the con Convolvulaceae. Convolvulaceae is the family of the morning glory, is Ipomia, and we have some succulent Ipomias as well. And without flowers, you cannot put a name on these things, but there are several that form these uh, caudex, or they have this pack called trunks like this. And this plant is one plant I dug up seven years ago, and still have it growing in my collection. It's three times as big as it was in this picture, but it's still going. Uh, from the Cucumitaceae, you also have the same sort of habit. You have plants in the genus Apodantra that have also caudex like this. And I have written an article for the journal about this genus a few years back. So there are several different species, and you cannot tell them apart until the flower. But this is how they look, and these are nice plants for pot cultivation because the caudex is not very big, so it's at, uh, at most one foot tall, half foot wide.
here are the leaves of one of these pieces. That's, that's how big it can get. This one, it's in fruit, and then I could put a name on it. This one is Apodentera congestiflora, and the next one is Apodentera villosa, because of the hairs in the fruits, in the flowers. So, moving along to the next family, uh, Dioscoriaceae is the young family, and we have a very strange plant in Brazil called Dioscoria basiclavicalis. It's a uh, uh, caudiciform, it's, it's not really like uh, Dioscore elephantipis, it has a, a tuberous stem like this, full of spines. But it's a very nice plant to grow, and it can grow to a meter tall, three feet, more or less, and then uh, the stem thinner, uh, gets thinner and it starts to, to be a vine. That's how thick it is. And that, that's how it grows in nature. It grows in dry vegetation, dry forests. The leaves. And this is a small plant I have in cultivation. And you can see the yams in the roots here. Still have those. In the Euphorbiaceae, you have Euphorbia, of course, and all the euphorbias in Brazil are the stick types. We don't have thick plants. And this is one of the nicest, Euphorbia apariciana, because it stays very small. The plants do not get bigger than six inches or so. And this is how it looks growing in the middle of the rocks. And a close up to, to see the, the stems. They are caniculate, as you can see here. It's very interesting. Here's one plant in flower, and here are some close-up of the flowers, and usually you find lots of ants and other small insects in these flowers, probably because they make a lot of nectar. The ants are really busy. I don't know if they pollinate these, these flowers or not. Uh, moving on to a different species, Euphorbia atastoma. This is very common in the dry areas in Brazil. It's one of those thick Euphorbias. Here you can see a small Melocactus seedling and also one of those Encolidiums. Uh, this is how tall it gets. It's a small shrub. And it grows in areas together with uh, Encolidium, Melocactus, in, usually in rock outcrops. It can be either limestone or not. It can be granite as well. And those are the flowers with, there is one uh, fly in this flower there. I don't know what's doing there, but probably getting some nectar. And also some, I forgot the name of this. Wasp. Uh, Similar species is Euphorbia cipollisi. It's very similar in habit. Here you can see also growing with uh, Encolidium, and it grows together with Ubermonia pectinifera. Uh, it has angular stems, and the flowers are red, unlike the previous species that have uh, yellow ciatia, as you can see here. But otherwise, it's very similar looking. Euphorbia sarcodis is one euphorbia that is, it looks like a small tree in nature. It really does. It, it has a small trunk, very succulent branches. This is how it grows. And it, I think it is a perfect bonsai plant. It, it, you can put straight, you can take one and put it in a pot and it looks like a bonsai. Here it's in the, the rainy season with flowers. And this is how pretty the flowers are. The, the ciata in this plant, they have this long teeth. And that's Euphorbia sarcodis. Uh, last of the Euphorbias, this is also from the same group of sarcodis, Euphorbia lixioides. Uh, it looks uh, like a dead shrub, but actually it's just because uh, the skin, the, the epidermis of this plant is white colored. It is is violet or something like that. But underneath it is 
green, green tissue and the plant photosynthesis even without the leaves. And here is a picture of the flower. You can see it's very similar to the previous one. And the color of the stem behind. It's a very attractive plant, Euphorbia lysiaides. And also in the Euphorbiaceae, we have a number of uh, shrubs that are also somewhat succulent, like this one, Pinosculus quercifolius. Uh, as a young plant, it has a very thick base. These are the flowers. And, but this is one of those plants that have these stings on the leaves, so maybe it's best not cultivated. But there are other plants, similar plants, like this one, Jatropha mollissima. Uh, it's also xerophyte and it has peeling bark. It's very nice. This is a seedling of that species. It's very thick, succulent. And the leaves, they are amazing. Look at the, the edges of the leaves on these plants. They are really nice. Uh, this is the flower of Jatropha mollissima. And another species, similar species, Jatropha mutabli. Uh, it has the same habit, but the leaves are along the stem. And these are the flowers. That, actually, this plant is, uh, reminds me of the, the it's not the palo verde, what's the name of the, the shrub you have here? I forgot. They have beautiful red flowers. Uh, in the Fabaceae, Fabaceae is the legume family. I just want to go and show this plant, Erythrina velutina. And this is a big tree with flowers. This is a smaller tree. It grows in the dry areas. If it grows in a, pop, in a place where there is plenty of uh, water, then it can grow really big. But if it grows on rock pavements, uh, here's the flowers of this velutina. They are beautiful as well. So when it is growing on, on top of the rocks, it gets dwarfed uh, and it stays very small. And it has a very thick trunk. Look at this one. This is a very old tree, but that's the size of the plant. And it's very soft. I mean, you can push a, a knife through the, the, the trunk of this plant. Uh, Gasneriaceae. I think this is perhaps one of the, the plants that are cultivated here in Brazil. Uh, the Sinigias, they have caudex, and most of them grow in, along the, so, the coast in Brazil on rock outcrops, and also in the, the southern part of Brazil. So you have these big lumps coming straight out of the rocks, and there are several different species with different flowers, different leaves, but all have the same habit of this caudex at the base, and then the leaves. And here is a group of plants of Sininja growing together with Parodia Hasselbergi in, in Rio Grande do Sul, the south of Brazil, and also some bromelias there. Uh, the Malvaceae, that's probably the most diverse group of plants that, are, that have succulents in Brazil. Uh, this is our version of the Baobá, Cavadilis arborea. It's the Brazilian equivalent of the Baobás from Africa. And these trees are really big, as you can see here. One person there. This is a small tree. And this is a big one. Uh, this tree was photographed in the dry season. Uh, it is without leaves. And a few months later I came back. This is the same tree as the previous one, you can see. And that's a person just close to it to show this to, for the scale. It's a huge plant. And that's me along one of the other, uh, another tree of the same species just to, for the scale. Uh, moving on to another genus, Saber. 
probably you've heard of this because some sabers are cultivated here because of the flowers. But this is a caldex form of saber, saber arianthus. Uh, that's how it grows in nature. It has a thin stem, but the base is really thick. Look at that. It's really nice in cultivation. And these are the flowers. The flowers are amazing. White with this red center. And you can see, see here why this plant got its name. Arianthus means hairy, and the petals are very hairy. Another one that has a similar habit is Saber Jasminadora. This is a big tree. That's how it grows in nature. It grows on top of the rock with the caudex exposed like this. And it has very strong spines. I mean, really strong spines. It's really nice. Look at the size of this. And this is the flower. It's similar to the previous one, but it has a yellow flower, a little bit smaller. And young plants, they are quite nice. Look at this. This is a perfect bonsai plant. It's, uh, it has a huge root, a caudex, with branches on top. That's an old specimen. It was even flowering, I think. Look at the roots here. It's very thick, very succulent, and it also grows on top of rocks. Uh, a more regular saber, this is saber pubiflora. One specimen in full flower here in the picture. Uh, that's one plant in the dry season, and for a scale, that's a friend of mine. So it has a very thick trunk as well, bottle shapes. These are the char characteristic bottle shaped trees uh, that we have in Brazil. That's the same tree again with me. And that's a different tree with Lane Newton. He came to Brazil to visit, and he was fascinated by these trees because it was were a perfect parallel to the trees that uh, he has in Africa, in Kenya. Uh, these are the flowers of Seba pubiflora, very nice pinkish flowers. But look at the center of the flowers. It's beautiful. It's a very ornamental tree. And last, Seba rubiflora. This one has been described only recently, but it's quite widespread. It's amazing how plants in Brazil get overlooked. I mean, it's a plant with red flowers. It grows over a, a wide area, and it was described less than 10 years ago. And that's how it looks. It also has this bottle shape, but it's not a big tree. Here is wood next to the same plant, so you can have a scale. And these are the pictures of the flowers. They are amazing. Really nice, bright red, really nice looking plant. Um, in the same family, you have other genera that also have pack calls. This is Pakira retusa. It has Thick stems, thick roots, it could grow as a caldice form as well. This is a small seedling, you can see even from a seedling, it has this thick root. Pseudobombax uh, is another genus in the Malvaceae, and this is a caldex plant, it's Pseudobombax campestri. It grows on top of the rocks and it has very big uh, football size uh, caldex at the base. That's a small plant. And when the plants are old, they are get covered in lichen. You can barely notice them. You think this is the rock, but it's not. That's the caudex of this branch here. You can see it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the flower of Pseudobombus campestri. And that, in the background here, is Microtocereus polyanthus. That's the, the locality where it grows. Uh, Another plant of the same genus, Pseudobombax, uh, Pseudobombax simplifolium. It has leaves that appear to be simple, but they are actually unifoliolate. And that's the bark of these plants are amazing. They have these striations in the bark. It's really nice. This, this is the, a small seedling of that. 
So the Bombus That's a different species, so the Bombus pavifolium. That's a small tree there, but it can get it can get really much bigger than this. And that's the, the, the leaves for you to see how different leaves are from the previous one. And this is the planting flower. Uh, that's how it grows in nature. It has this thick trunk, very succulent, very practical, growing in the scrubland. And the bark is green, it's really attractive. And some trees, they develop this uh, bark that looks like wax that has been melted. Look at that. In some trees, it's really impressive, really amazing how the bark looks like. Look at this. I mean, not all trees are like this. Usually they are smooth, the bark is smooth, only with the striations where they are growing, but some have this kind of bark. Uh, least Pseudomomax calcicula, this is also a species that was described less than 10 years ago, and it also grows on rock outcrops, and the shape of this plant, it's amazing. I think it reminds me of Fokieria uh, purposi. What do you say? Uh, uh, Woody, you like that plant? It's not here. So that's how the plant looks like. Also a beautiful plant in this family. Very succulent, very thick stems. Uh, another species, this one, it's called Spiroteca elegans, and it's also a species that was described quite recently. I described it with my friend here. Uh, this also succulent, and it has a trunk full of spines, very sharp, pointy <laughs> spines. But it's a beautiful tree, and very small leaves, small fruits, and the flowers are just amazing. Look at the shape of these flowers. really nice. And this tree, there was the, the, the plant I, I showed before, i just go back a little bit, this tree was just alongside the, the uh, highway. So people have passed this area lots of time and nobody even noticed that was a new species. Okay. Uh, if you really look in Brazil, you find lots of succulents which are back called like this. Uh, in the Melos Tomatesi, I found uh, one small plant of this. I don't know what it is, but in the place where I found it, there are lots of plants that look just like this, and I find it really nice. I never could look, look at the two plants here, look at how thick this plant is. It's a perfect small caudiciform plant. Uh, moving on to Moraes. Moraes is the fig tree family, and we have a number of figs in Brazil as well. Some of them are caudiciforms. Look at that, how the plant grows, just embracing the rocks. Even from a young age, you have the caudex look there. Um, the piperaceae, the peperomians, and I think only peperomians are succulents in this family. Uh, Grant showed one plant from Peru, which is amazing, but we also have some of them in Brazil that are quite succulent as well. The leaves of these are like small blobs, peperomia circiniata. It's a net fight in the forest, but because of uh, the trunks of the trees, they dry out very fast. This plant has to develop uh, succulents to survive. It's not unlike the cacti, like Ripsalis and Salinicerus and this kind of plants. So another Peperomia, Peperomia circinata. This grows on top of the mountains and has very thick leaves as well. Uh, this one I 
don't know if it's described. I found it growing in Bahia, in the mountains also. Look at how beautiful it is and how thick the leaves are. Peperoma oreophila. Oreophila means from the mountains or love in the mountains. And another plant that is also plant growing in the mountains of Minas Gerais. Peperomia sp, I don't know what that is, but it's surely a very nice plant. Peperomia calioides, another of these uh, mountain peperomias that we have in Brazil, with succulent leaves. Peperomia crinicalis, it's very similar to Cicinata I showed before, but it's very hairy. The leaves are quite hairy, and stems as well. Peperomia tetrasphila, this is a very widespread species, not, not so much succulent, but still succulent enough, I think. That's another unidentified species with very nice color in the leaves. Uh, in the Portula case, we only have Portulacas, but we have quite a few of those. You can look how succulent the plants are, look at the leaves on these plants here. This is Portulaca irsutissima, irsutissima because of the hairs in between the leaves. And that's how it looks like when it flowers. That's a different species, Portulaca minensis, also leaf and stem succulent. That's one of my favorite Portulacas in Brazil, Portulaca wet that money, because these flowers are three inches across. It's big flowers for a portulaca, and it sounds quite succulent as well. Look at the flower, and the color is just amazing. I mean, you cannot photograph it and get the real color, because the camera cannot process it. In, in, if you see the plant uh, in your hand, it's fantastic, the color, the color of this plant. That's how it grows in nature, in sandy areas, Lots of plants making small uh, shrubs. That's a different species, Portulaca halimoides, also leaf succulent with uh, white flowers. In the Solanaceae, the Solanaceae is the family of tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, bell peppers. And we have lots of Solanaceae in Brazil, and some of them are succulent. Oops. This one I found in uh, one area. It is a small shrub with very nice leaves, but look at the base. It's very thick, and when I say succulent, you can really, with your fingernails, push your fingernails in this plant, and it will lose uh, uh, moisture from it. It's really succulent. And that's another nice plant in the Solano family, Dysochroma viridiflora. It's a packed coal growing as an epiphyte in palm trees, in dry areas. That's how it looks like it, when you remove it from, from where it's growing. It has this very thick, very big uh, bases, like a caudex. And I have been growing this plant as well for a number of years. It's very easy in cultivation. And you can grow from cuttings, and the cuttings also develop these uh, thick stems of roots. I don't know if they are roots or stems. That's a small plant. And that's how the flower of this plant looks like. This is not my picture, but it's an amazing flower as well. Next is Vitaci, which is the family of the grapes. And we have a number of uh, grape relatives in Brazil that are vines, that are succulent. This is one of them. Uh, they are all placed in the genus Cissus. Uh, very thick stems, very succulent as well. I mean, it's not woody at all. It's full of water inside of this stems. That is the inflorescence of one of those sea species. 
different one with red flowers. I don't know if this is different from the other one. I also don't know my scissors very well. I just recognize the plants in the field. And these are fruits. So you can see the great relationship here. So, uh, there are many succulent plants in Brazil, as you can see. Most of them are just little known and seldom cultivated. I mean, how many of, the, of you have seen any of these plants that I have showed you here before? Yeah. So, that's what I was going to show you. Thank you.